Yeah, thank you for the introduction. So these figures are just to show that the problems are real. Real factory floors have become the victims for cyber crimes. And uh, more importantly, comparing to the traditional attacks that are targeting at consumer systems, these attacks are different in the sense that attackers are not only trying to make profits, but more importantly, they want to cause physical damage. They want to cause safety hazards. Learning from the uh, the, the prior incidents, we know that the PRC actually is a major attack vector. So PRC stands for Programmable Logic Controller, which is the core control unit for the entire factory floor. So safety violations actually can be introduced into the PRC code either by uh, accidentally by uh, mistakes or intentionally by attacks. Either way, the prob problematic code will eventually cause damage to the infrastructure. So knowing this, a great many of prior work actually has aimed to automatically detect the safety violations in individual PRCs. However, a common limitation of the prior work is that they overlooked an important fact that the industrial control system is actually a highly collaborative environment. PRC is never working alone. So this photo actually shows our test bed. It's called smart test bed. It's a precise miniature of uh, automotive production line. It's actually developed by domain experts from uh, Rockwell Automation, which is the number one uh, manufacturing vendor. As you can see, right, even within this small scale system, it has already included a lot of different components. It has a PRC and also has multiple CNC machines, right? each of which is also uh, equipped with a small PRC. And we also have multiple robots, which are programmed to perform different actions. Aside from all those um, programmable units, we also have some non-programmable units. For example, here we have a circular conveyor belt, and we also have pallets that are moving on top of this conveyor. So these pallets are used as containers to hold and carry these parts and deliver these parts to different CNC machines for processing. As a result, PRCs are actually intensively communicating and collaborating with all the components on the factory floor. And the PRC code is actually driven by the external events from other machines. What that means is that in order to be able to detect the safety violations by testing PRC code, we also need to take all the external inputs events into consideration. So essentially, this is a code testing problem for event-driven programs, which, however, is a well-studied problem um, in other domains. For example, Android applications or uh, web applications. In order to understand how to test the PRC code, which we can just uh, first learn from this prior work. For example, if we want to run, uh, we want to test an uh, Android app, what we can do is that uh, we can first run it in an uh, emulator, and then we can uh, model and uh, simulate input events as a sequence. To improve co code coverage, we can further rearrange the order of the uh, events to generate different permutations. So all the sequences will be used to uh, drive the program to run and eventually uh, help us to find the bugs. Essentially, we can do the same thing for testing PRC. Right? So we can first uh, simulate the PRC execution and then further simulate input events. Of course, we can rearrange their orders. However, in practice, what we have noticed is that just a rearranging the order of the events is not sufficient to test a PRC code. What we have observed here is that two event sequences of the same ordering may or may not cause a safety problem because their timings are different. To give you guys a more concrete idea, let's take a look at this uh, running example. This is actually a real-world problem that we have discovered from our test bed. 
So here we have a conveyor belt, which is sending an empty pallet to a cell. So this cell consists of uh, two CNC machines and a robot. The entire system is controlled by a PRC. So once this pallet has arrived at this cell, it will be blocked by a stopper. During this process, five events will be sent to uh, PRC. And once PRC has received all these five events, it will trigger two actions. First, it will update the state of the part, which is actually stored on the part. Once that is done, PRC will receive a signal, event six, update complete. The second action is to request the robot to pass a processed part from the CNC machine to the pallet. And once that is done, the PRC will receive event seven, part air conveyor. So once both of these two events are true, then PRC knows that now the pallet has already been loaded with a part. It will then retract the stopper to let it go. So notice that here, this event seven, part F conveyor, actually has another purpose. So when it is also used to control the robot, when the signal is on, the robot will always uh, wait at the conveyor belt. Only if it is turned off, meaning the part has already left the cell and the conveyor belt is now clear, then the robot can move towards a CNC machine uh, to prepare for another delivery. However, in practice, for the sake of a throughput, we don't want the, the robot to always wait at the conveyor belt. Instead, we want it to uh, move towards the CNC machine in advance right, to save some time for another delivery, regardless of uh, whether the conveyor belt is cleared or not. And therefore, we will proactively terminate this event seven within 0.5 seconds. Nevertheless, this does not cause any problem in normal situations. And the system works fine and it conforms to our predefined safety rule, which requires that the time duration between pallet arrival and the pallet departure is no greater than 30 seconds. We further formally define this safety rule using TPTL, right? timed propositional temporal logic. However, if somehow the event seven happens very early, for example, because of uh, the increase of a uh, robot speed, then what can happen is that this signal will terminate prematurely, right? even before the occurrence of uh, event six. In this case, there's actually no time window when both of these two signals can be true. And even if the pallet has already been loaded with a part, the PRC will never know and it will never uh, retract the stopper to let the pallet go. This will definitely violate our safety rule. To detect such a problem, let's first just try the traditional way, which is to generate event sequences uh, based on, on different ordering uh, to test the PRC code. So for example, we can create a sequence like this, right, from event one to event seven. So in this case, everything works fine. Then we can rearrange the order of the events, right, two, five, seven, six. So in this case, something wrong happens. So this is actually exactly the same as what we have seen in the last slide. However, such a sequence may not always be able to cause this problem. For example, we can create a third sequence, which actually shares the same ordering as the second one, five, seven, six. However, since uh, event six actually happens before the termination of event seven, everything still works fine. So this actually explains that pure ordering-based event sequence generation cannot sufficiently help us to discover the safety violations in the PRC code. To solve this problem, we proposed our solution, VET PRC, which can create timed event sequences. 
Uh, to do so, we first perform program analysis on peers and robot code to extract the causal dependencies among the events. Right? So this can help us to uh, rule out the impossible permutations and uh, reduce search space. And then we further resort to the runtime data that is collected from our physical test beds and perform data mining to extract timing invariance for events. So these timing invariants are corresponding to some certain uh, machine operations. So eventually, this time of the event sequences can help us to perform testing. Now let's see how we actually apply that PRC to our running example. So first of all, we want to perform program analysis in order to extract the causal dependencies among events. However, if we just look at the PRC code, what we can see is a bunch of independent if clauses, so which are effectively the event handlers in the PRC code. We do not really have any knowledge how these events are related to one another. To address that problem, we further look at the collaboration between a PRC and a robot. So in this case, uh, when the part at conveyor is false, in other words, the event negative part at conveyor is received, the PRC will send a signal to DI0, which is the digital input zero at the robot side. Upon receiving this signal, the robot will trigger a routine uh, in which it will first perform some uh, robot movements, and eventually it will send a signal to the digital output two, which is then mapped back to the part at conveyor event at the PRC side. So now we know that there's actually a causal dependency between these two events. And by further performing data mining, we know that the time duration between these events, two events, is actually a, a soft invariant, which is actually corresponding to the time cost to deliver a part. And furthermore, if we consider the speed reconfiguration for the robot, we can also compute the theoretical bound for this delivery time. Then by digging to the robot code further, we know that the event seven actually can only last for 0.5 seconds, which is actually a constant hard-coded in the robot program. And again, by performing data mining, we know that the time duration between event five and event six is also a uh, temporary invariant. So there are some technical details due to the time limit, I'll just do a flyby. So in order to um, model the causal relations uh, among the events, we actually introduced this uh, timed uh, event causality graph. So to build this graph, we actually uh, borrow some idea from the annual graph, and uh, eventually we perform context-sensitive, flow-sensitive, interprocedural uh, data flow analysis. So the detailed algorithm is in our paper. And in terms of the data mining, we also uh, follow some existing approach. Particularly, we follow the synoptics approach to determine the qualitative relations between events. And further, we leverage perfumes algorithm to determine the quantitative relations between events. And eventually, for this case, we can uh, discover three time temporary invariants. So now that we have built the graph and we have uh, extracted the time temporary invariants, we can leverage this knowledge to create uh, timed event sequences. Particularly for those independent events, uh, for example, in this case, the f first five events, which do not bear any uh, relations, we can actually arrange them in any order. So when five events are all received, the time is T. And then further by leveraging the knowledge from data mining, we know that the event update complete actually happens uh, between time uh, T plus 15 to T plus 20. And further, in order to encode this timing, timing knowledge into uh, event sequences, we uh, discretize the continuous time range into multiple slices. And for each slice, we will create a version event. So for example, here, 
we can dis uh, discretize this time range into three slices, uh, two, two slices, and therefore create a uh, three version event. So in, in this time sequence, we only need to pick one. And we can do the same thing for another event, part at conveyor. The only difference is that since we know this event only lasts for uh, 0.5 seconds, so we will uh, proactively terminate this signal uh, accordingly. So here we actually can create this event sequence that can actually cause the safety violations that we have discussed. However, another question remains here is uh, how do we discretize the time range um, in a proper way? So we will answer that in our evaluation. So our evaluation is actually performed uh, using real world physical test beds. We actually applied it to two different test beds. One is a smart test bed, the other is the fish technique, uh, which is a smaller but more complex test bed. We also have applied a VET PRC to 10 different real world scenarios in terms, uh, in order to uh, detect the real world problems. So the first question we want to answer in our evaluation is how many uh, event sequences can actually be created using different techniques. So this chart shows the result. So the red curve is a baseline, which represents the total amount of uh, event sequences that can be created using state of art technique, uh, all sequence. Right, so all sequence consider only the event ordering, but it consider all possibilities. When we further apply program analysis to uh, remove the impossible permutations, uh, we call it a VET PRC sequence, then we can reduce this amount from the red curve to the green curve. Furthermore, when we apply time discretization, uh, this amount will be increased. It will be increased from the green curve to the orange curve to the black curve and eventually to the blue curve due to different uh, granularities. So as you can see, so this graph shows that the time discretization actually increased the amount of uh, generate description, uh, gen generate uh, uh, sequences uh, to a large extent, especially with the highest uh, granularity. However, since we have already applied the program analysis to rule out the impossible permutations, so the time discretization with a median granularity, in other words, this uh, uh, black curve, can still give us some reasonable numbers. So in the end, we perform a comparative experiment between state of art and VET PRC to see whether we can find real bugs. So for state of art technique, we have adopted two algorithms or sequence and VET PRC sequence. And for VET PRC, uh, we choose to uh, still go with uh, three different parameters for the granularity levels. The result is promising. So while the state of art, pure ordering based event sequence generation cannot help us to detect any safety, safety violations in our test beds, but PRC with different granularity selection can always help us to detect uh, those uh, problems. And furthermore, we noticed that when we apply time discretization with different granularities, the discovered error triggering uh, ranges are also different. For example, in scenario one, when we divide the uh, time duration into two slices, then what we can see is um, the problem may occur only when the robot is running at its maximum speed. However, if we improve the granularity and divide the uh, time range into five slices, then we, will, we may know that as long as the speed of the robot is greater than 550, then the, the error may occur. So in general, with higher granularity, we may get more precise error triggering ranges for the discovered problems. However, in practice, empirically, we also noticed that 
the time discretization with a median granularity can al already give us some reasonable results. And not to mention that the amount of a generated sequence uh, is also acceptable. So to sum it up, so we have studied the real world uh, ICS uh, test beds and got very important insight. Right? So real world PRC is um, event driven and timing sensitive. To detect the safety problems in such PRC, so we developed a system called their PRC, which can automatically construct timed event sequences. And the result is promising. So that PRC outperforms state of art and can detect the hidden safety problems that cannot be discovered using the prior techniques. So with that, I conclude my talk and I'm happy to take questions. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm Powell from UC Davis. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you use the data mining to find the timing mm -hmm. information. Now, do you use that as a ground truth or um, do you use that as a starting point, but you will going to find the exact timing later? Uh, we use that, actually use that at ground truth. Okay, so then my question is that uh, because it's data mining, you mm -hmm. may not have observed all the states. That's true. Um, so um, will this cause false positive or false negative or both in your approach? Um, so I would say it's uh, generally a challenging problem, the, the coverage problem. So for us, it's the best effort. And uh, also, our focus is to uh, find out the timing variance that is related to the machine operations. Yeah. And uh, in our case, those machine, uh, there, there's a limited set of uh, machines. As long as our system goes through all those critical steps for the machine operations, then we can uh, guarantee the discovery for those timing variance. So we say guarantee, uh, which part do you guarantee? Do you guarantee? So for example, we want to look for the time cost to deliver, deliver a part, for example. Uh, as long as we, uh, in, our, um, uh, in our data mining, we always go through that path, then we can always observe that uh, behavior. So assuming that your data mining is perfect, then you guarantee that the safety property would That's never true. be violated. That's true. Thank you.